1943 Canadian Army Track and Field Championships, the competing athletes marched past the grandstand where the salute was taken by General McNaughton. Fine weather promised fine performances, and before the day was done, six new records had been established. Sergeant G. Bortolusi, 5th Division, who won the 100-yard dash, later set up a new mark to capture the 220. Another new record was made in the high jump by Private W.L. St. John, 3rd Division. In the one-mile event, yet another new mark was established when Lance Corporal R.N. Maybe Army troops cut nearly three seconds from the existing record. The running broad jump was won by Lieutenant J.D. Crashley, 5th Division, who also won the Turner Trophy for the individual scoring the highest number of points during the day. In the 440, Sergeant R.C. Pearson Army troops beat out Trooper A.J. Brissett and Private F.W. Redmond. In the three-mile run, Corporal A.T. McLean, 4th Division 1, with Corporal G. Elliott, 2nd, and Sapper Jepson, 3rd. In this event last year, the result was a dead heat between Elliott and Bryant, and a new record was made. In the shot put, Sergeant L.E. Gore, 2nd Corps troops, added more than two feet to the previous mark to set another new record. In the tug of war finals, the 5th Division team from the Westminster Regiment won in two straight pulls from the 3rd Division champions, RCASC. In the hop, step and jump, Corporal A.A. Davidson won out over Corporal N.F. Grinson and Guardsman C.R. England. 5th Division won the 440 relay and 1st Corps troops the mile relay, both setting new records. The winning team was the 5th Division. Presenting the prizes, General McNaughton said, some of our competitors are absent this year. They're doing a grand job and we wish them well. It was a proud occasion for the Royal Regiment of Canada and the South Saskatchewan Regiment when their majesties, accompanied by Canada's High Commissioner, greeted their officers commanding, Lieutenant Colonel F.L. Nichols of Toronto and Lieutenant Colonel F.A. Cliff of Melfort, Saskatchewan. There was a formal inspection of the two units who were drawn up side by side on one of the Whitley Camp Parade grounds, a site well known to their forefathers about the years 16, 17, and 18. was to do honor to two units who distinguished themselves at Dieppe, to present them with new colors. It was here that His Majesty the King said, today colors are no longer carried on the battlefield, but they still remain the emblem of courage, self-sacrifice, and devotion to duty, and they are still guarded no less jealously and reverently than of old. I give you these colors, therefore, for your safekeeping with every confidence that in your hands their care and custody are assured. To one and all of you, I offer my best wishes for the future. As the Royal Regiment of Canada and the South Saskatchewan Regiment marched past their king, he saw how the veterans of Dieppe had reformed ranks, how reinforcements had returned the units to strength, and how with renewed life they were prepared to carry forward again into battle the honor and in spirit the colors won by their forefathers and themselves. Nearly 20,000 new recruits, pocket edition and otherwise, to the growing legion of British baseball fans foregathered at the Empire Stadium, Wembley, not long ago to see Canadians and Americans play ball. The teams were greeted by Major General P.J. Montague, Senior Officer at CMHQ, Lieutenant General J. Devers, American General in charge of the European Theater of Operations, and Lord Wigram, representing the British Red Cross, for whose benefit the game was held. In the famous stadium where some of England's greatest soccer cup finals have been played, were resurrected shades of the Giants and Dodgers and Yankees and other tribal names that mean so much in North America.
some good ball and there was some bad ball. But there was certainly no doubt that the exhibition made a big hit with the natives, even when they didn't know just what was going on. It may not be cricket, but it's certainly baseball to kill the umpire. The final score, six to three for the Americans. While the Allied troops in Sicily were preparing for the second phase of the European invasion, Canadian hospitals in North Africa were tending the casualties sustained in action. Casualties during the Sicily campaign were surprisingly light, and due to prompt and efficient handling by the RCEMC, serious cases were kept to a minimum. It's a far cry from a modern, well-equipped hospital building in England to a canvas community on the sands of the desert, but Canadian medicals quickly adapted themselves to the new conditions. Thorough training and well-established routine kept hospital technique at a high level. And convalescing patients had good cause to be thankful for the speedy and efficient treatment which saved many a life and many a soul. While these Canadians were healing the scars of battle, others in the reinforcement camps were preparing to go into action. Once a day, every man, including officers, went over a conditioning course that left nothing to the imagination. The sand and sun of the North African desert proved a tough transition from the mud and rain of England. But this kind of training is very necessary for troops who have to keep pace with fleet-footed Italians. One of the chief reasons for the swift advance of the Canadians over tough mountainous country was the great work done by the Royal Canadian Engineers in building emergency roads and repairing those damaged by the retreating enemy. The bulldozer proved itself nearly as great an offensive weapon as the tank, and the experience of men who had spent many years with these great caterpillars in Canada's bush country was invaluable. Within a matter of hours, old roads were in use again or new links had been formed. Military traffic was able to flow forward at high speed and give the Axis forces no time to consolidate new defensive positions. But sometimes roads just couldn't be made. So the Canadians used local methods of getting supplies forward. No story of the Sicily campaign would be complete without mention of the mule trains that played a vital part in maintaining isolated units. It was this improvised supply system that made possible the Canadians' cross-country trek and the breakthrough in the Central Mountains that helped the 8th Army to smash the Catania defenses. One of the least known jobs in the Army is that of official war artists. With the 1st Division from the initial landings went Lieutenant W.A. Ogilvy to perpetuate on canvas the Canadian side of the campaign. Italian irrigation ditches were put to a new use as Canadians cleaned up. And it was a real cleanup as the Allied forces prepared Sicily to be the springboard for the big plunge into Europe. A plunge that started on September the 3rd by splashing a lot of heels out of the toe of Italy. <laughs> <laughs>